Welcome back to Everything Money. In this video, we take a look at three companies who have hit their 52-week lows. It's Warby Parker, Tupperware, and Big Lots. We give you our thoughts on these companies moving forward and potentially what you should be paying for these, a value investor's approach. We'll include our process and mindset when looking at companies that are in the tank. We'll show you our, our eight pillar approach and our software to see how you can use these financials to make better investing decisions. Paul, when these companies hit the tank, I get interested. So let's talk about them. I know you love Warby Parker. You used to love Tupperware and you shop at Big Lots often. So go ahead. Guys, follow us on our new Instagram account, Everything Money Investing, and also follow our three personal accounts because it's exciting. I okay. get fired up when I see companies at their 52-week low, Paul. I mean, this is this is right. Well, a lot of a lot of uh, value investors will use that as an opportunity to go look at companies and say which ones have at 52-week lows to see if there's opportunity there. So let's go to our exclusive software, Everything Money. Go to the Eight Pillars tab, and our first one is Warby Parker, which I'm wearing right now. No, Warby, Big Lots, and Tupperware. Yeah. Okay. So we go to Tupperware. All right, guys. So Tupperware. Oh wow! Look at that. 52 week high was 38, 52 week low was 13.96. It's basically there, the five year chart. I remember when, I remember when Tupperware was a dollar 60, and I told during during COVID, I'm like, man, and I chickened we're, out. We were worried about bankrupt. We were worried about them going under. I, I just chickened out. I just thought the brand was dead. Yeah. I just looked at the stock price, and it affected my decision. Mm -hmm. I'm just as guilty as you guys are about it. It affected my decision. I go, well, it must be a dead company if the stock's this low. So. Anyways, let's look at the eight pillars tab. Okay, high, high five-year PE, good price to free cash flow for the five years though. Buying back shares, very low debt, revenue growth is down. Okay, so let's go look at that revenue growth. Is it competition that's really pushed like maybe the yeah. revenue down? I mean, yeah, everyone, everyone can, can make this Their stuff Their products now. are quality products or you can go to the dollar store and get the chintzy you stuff. Just keep throwing away, I guess. Yes. Yeah, look at this free cash flow. It just keeps dropping and dropping and dropping. I'm ignoring Tupperware. I'm just ignoring it completely. I mean, net income's dropping and dropping and dropping. Free cash flow keeps dropping. Uh, you know, let's do stock analyzer tool just for fun. I'm gonna do two two years. I'm just gonna roll right through this. I'm gonna do ten. I'm gonna do a five year analysis. Two assumptions. I'm gonna go negative two and negative five percent revenue growth. Profit margin of oh geez. Mm hmm. Two and four, free cash flow of three and five, PE of six and ten, six and ten, and twelve and a half percent return. Analyze button. I mean, I got. I mean, it's getting close, but it was a buy back then. But oh well. So it's still over. I mean, I don't know. It's just it's a tough one because I do think the. I think Tupperware is a great brand name. But I can't tell you which plastic containers in my house are Tupperware or which You're ones right. are Tupperware. Yeah, I have no Absolutely idea. Absolutely not. You're right. I have a bunch of them. And if no you idea. told me, Paul, here's Tupperware for $5 and here's a non-brand, looks exactly the same for two, what am I doing? Two. Sure. So, okay. That was, that was my biggest worry during COVID. You're out of love with Tupperware. Yep. Big lots. Oh, wow. Look at big lots. Big lots. Wow. Look at that fall. You tell your boyfriend uh, about big lots? Who's that? Connor. Oh, <laughs> He All right, so it. Big Lots is, it had a 52-week high of 73. I'll text him right now. He's going to say, still higher than what we paid for it. <laughs> I remember $11 was I was looking at it, and I didn't pull the trigger because Gary said to me, would you be surprised if Big Lots was gone? Guys, independent thinking. Think independently. Eight pillars tab. A lot of debt. They took on a lot of debt recently. I do know that. Bad ROIC. Um, pretty good price of free cash. Oh, wow, really good. PE, five-year PE. The revenue growth, oh, wow. Okay. Go look at same-store sales, guys. That's always a big thing. Look at same-store sales growth, number of sales going, et cetera. So um, look at the eight pillars tab. We said that already. I mean, I still wouldn't be surprised if Big Lots was gone like any of these stores. I mean, you know, it seems like retail is... is it doesn't seem like retail is kind of drying up. We're seeing stores being closed left and right. Um, yeah, it does. And um, you have to go believe in their long-term plan. What's their long-term vision for the, for the company? Are they, I mean, they have pretty good margin. I think it was like 40% margin on the company. I, I, see, I, gross I, margin. I definitely don't see some sort of moat. Yeah. And I don't know why I would go to Big Lots as opposed to one of the other sort of... And it's not screaming deal enough where I'm like, okay, I don't care about the moat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Store. Warby Parker. Guys, 
These are Warby Parkers. These two. Ours, yours are too? Oh, my I, glasses. I love Warby Parker. They're over here too. I love their sunglasses. Moe's got their glasses. I just love Warby Parker. Their experience makes me feel like I'm an Apple. Their, their customer service and experience. Yeah, and, and their clientele does too with the piercings. Well, oh, they just went public. Their noses and ears. They just went public. When did they go public? September. God, how is this a 52 week low? It's a, it's a, it's a 13 week low. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's low. Yeah. This is fairly typical for IPOs, it's right? Selling for 11 times sales, guys. 11 times sales. That's a lot. Unless you think their sales are going to skyrocket. I mean, what are their, what's their sales growth projections going to be? Let's go to the income statement, go to quarterly. So, guys, Warby Parker is really young. Uh, can you make an argument for buying Warby Parker? I'm sure you can. I'm sure there's some sort of valuation metric that makes it makes sense. The question is what's the revenue growth number going to be? My personal opinion on companies this young and not, and not even profitable yet is just wait. Wait till the dust all settles. They start consistently making profit, consistently making cash flow. Unless it was screaming deal, like it was selling for one time. Go look at other companies. Like, like what other companies are like Warby Parker? Go look at them and see what multiples they sell for. And once it gets to that level, then go like uh, based on sales, <laughs> then go make a decision. I almost said What it. do you think, Seth? Does Warby Parker have some sort of advantage? I mean, like, there is something, I just feel like there's something special. I'm not going to lens crafters or something. There's something special about Warby Parker. To me, Parker. I just like the way it looks. It seems like it seems much better quality. Lens crafters just seems old and dated. You know what I mean? I'm sure they can change that, but I just like, I know, they're, they're sunglasses I love. Yeah, I, love I have their multiple pairs. I, I lost one in Mexico when I went over here. <laughs> vacation when I, when, when I watch the life get sucked out of your eyes <laughs> i fell through a waterfall uh, mo are people trading warby, Par warby parker over there Clear well, here's that board, the problem with know. warby parker and the, the big problem is this mess on the board but look at this this is this is all we have so they just got a 50-day moving average just a couple of days ago so How something cute. like this i'm not trading it from this perspective why don't we pull it up on a, a swing trading chart i mean a day trading chart what's their ticker symbol oh here we go I would be surprised to see. So here's the issue with this also. It doesn't get enough consistent volume to send the stock to be a pretty volatile. Like today, it's only up 1%, and that's not very conducive for day trading. I mean, you could have had a little bit of a day trade in here a couple of days ago, but what we like to see from a day trading perspective is stocks that have a little more volatility where they move about 2 to 3% a day, so you can grab a little portion of that. It's very hard to do that with stocks that don't move much. So, Seth, it's th this to me is just something that you move on from. Let it become maybe the hype of the day. I don't know how glasses become hype, but maybe th this will become hypey and then you can go and trade it. So if you want to learn how to trade this, how to not trade this, find stocks that you want to trade, come and join me. You get the Trading 101 series, which is all the rules for day trading, swing trading, and long-term trading. The Employed Trader Series, which is six stocks that I go through every day. Exclusive monthly Saturday seminars that you'll get access to uh, with me. And the BidNask community, which is 950 people in Discord. And everybody's on the same page. So it's a great place to be. Speaking of this community, you can get the software. You can join the community all by going to Everything Money, Paul. Tell them about what they're going to get. The reason we created the software was exactly for this. Because people watch the videos, want to do their own analysis when they see me do this. So we created the software so people could do this. You get everything you see here on the Everything Money channel, on the Everything Money page, all our tools, plus all the ones coming up. You get over 30 years of financial data. You get access to Seth Mo and I. You get all the eight pillar analysis, that stock analyzer tool, real estate calculator, retirement calculator, eight pillar portfolio. We can put in 50 stocks at once. It tells you how they all look as a portfolio. All of this plus exclusive daily content. We have one, two, three videos a day that we release only to our users of our software. You get it all in mobile form. All of this is available on your mobile app, all for only 90 cents per day. 90 cents per day, if you can increase your returns or decrease your losses by one or 2% a year, that could lead to hundreds of thousands, probably even millions of dollars in extra net worth for only 90 cents a day. Two ways to sign up, everythingmoney.com or Patreon. The benefit of everythingmoney.com directly is you don't pay sales tax yet because we're not big enough. So sign up, only 90 cents a day. This is a no-brainer, less than a cup of coffee. All right, that is our take on these on these three companies with a 52-week low. Uh, we will keep you updated. I will, I will, go ahead, Paul, I'm sorry. I do want to reiterate, very common theme amongst value investors is looking for 52-week lows. Doesn't mean they're value, but it's a good way to get started on your approach for looking at these companies. Very, very important aspect to look at. We'll keep you posted. Thanks for watching the video. Follow a thumbs up. You're going to love the software. I'll see you next video.